We live in a world where many people conceive of relations between Muslims, Jews, and Christians, and other religions to be one of mutual neglect at its best, violent struggle at its worst. It's a world where the ghosts of terrorism has fostered grotesque characters and gross misunderstandings between faiths and cultures. In such a world, His Highness the Aga The effective world of the future will be one of pluralism, a world that understands, <coughs> appreciates, and builds on diversity. The rejection of pluralism plays a significant role in breeding destructive conflicts from which no continent has been spared in recent decades. But pluralist societies are not accidents of history. They are a product, a product of enlightened education and continuous investment by governments and all of civil society in recognizing and celebrating the diversity of the world's peoples. Civil society organizations make a major contribution to human development particularly when democracies are failing or have failed. For it is then that the institutions of civil society can carry, and often do carry, an added burden to help sustain improvements in quality of life. To me, therefore, the central question is why these democracies are failing, and what can the world's nations and international organizations do to sustain their competence and stability. A number of countries in which we are active have opted to harness enormous resources to universal primary education, causing a significant under-expenditure on secondary and tertiary education. As long as the developed world hesitates to commit long-term investment towards education for democracy, and instead laments the issue of so-called failed states, much of the developing world will continue to face bleak prospects for democracy. And the West should not discount that an accumulation of failed democracies could be a serious threat to itself and its values, capable of causing, if not conflict, deep currents of stress amongst societies. And in order to be allowed into a community, we sometimes have to compromise. Uh, and I would like to highlight gender as, as an example of that uh, compromise that sometimes has to be made. Would both of you comment, please, on how far can we compromise in order to be allowed in and do good work? One of the things development can do is destabilize communities. That is not the role of development. The role of development is to work with communities at a given point in time in ways of partnership that communities can make their own and work with. You cannot take developing societies and simply inject into those societies at a given time attitudes which are not acceptable to those societies. If your process is satisfactory, if it is successful, those societies will build on what they learn. So it's a process of working with them, not imposing visions of society which they don't understand, they don't associate with, and which ultimately, in reality, they will reject. They are key development actors and players and the commitment they bring to bear often with very low salaries and very, very uh, tough conditions, I think, cannot be missed. Yes, I think that the guidelines for civil society organizations are a necessary starting point. The second point is who regulates or who oversees that the guidelines are being implemented. And there, there are two approaches. One is to, for governments to pass legislation. And the second one is for a forum or fora to exist for self-regulatory processes.